cardiac tumors and pericarditis now cardiac tumors don't have much to contribute towards the cardiovascular pathologies but when they do they have rather serious uh, pathological consequences so in this lecture we're going to talk about what are those cardiac tumors and we're going to talk about pericarditis then what is pericarditis what are its further types and how it can be a sequelae of those cardiac tumors so first of all we're going to start with cardiac tumors how they're classified either they're primary cardiac tumors either they're secondary cardiac tumors next on we're going to go into the depth of it and we're going to start with primary tumors with myxomas that what genetic manifestations or what genetic mutations may lead to myxoma what are myxomas where they are located inside the heart and what are the pathological consequences of myxomas next on we're going to talk about rhabdomyomas we're going to talk about how rhabdomyomas are the tumors of the children where they are propagated and which mutation leads to the propagation or the origin of uh, rhabdomyoma next on we're going to talk about papillary fibroblastomas that how they are differentiated from these two types of tumors and uh, then what's the prognosis of them and do they affect the walls or the valves we're going to talk about in detail next time we're going to talk about different subtypes or minor types of tumors which are present inside the heart or primary tumors which are present inside the heart and some metastatic tumors which originate from the heart itself next time we're going to talk about pericarditis what pericarditis is how it is uh, uh, formed or how it is originated what are its types we're going to talk about first of all constrictive pericarditis then we're going to talk about adherent pericarditis how they are differentiated we're going to look into the we're going to look deep into their uh, gross structures and we're going to look what are the pathological consequences of constrictive pericarditis what are the pathological consequences of adherent pericarditis and how they are differentiated from each other on the basis of clinical manifestations next time we're going to talk about pleural effusion what pleural effusion is where does it happen between what layers and between those layers what amount of fluid is supposed to be normal and what amount of fluid if slowly deposited can be withheld here and what amount of fluid if abruptly uh, got there will lead to the consequences of cerebral vascular system pathology next on we're going to talk about cardiac tamponade what cardiac tamponade is and how it is related to pericardial effusion and at the end we're going to talk about metabolic heart diseases which will include hyperthyroid patient that how hyperthyroid patient will lead to uh, cardiac diseases and then we're going to talk about beriberi diseases which is further divided into dry beriberi beri and hot beriberi and we're going to talk about how they're differentiated from each other and what pathological manifestation will they lead up to that's all we'll be covering in this lecture for today to watch this complete lectures please subscribe to scarda.com it also contains thousands of other lectures which vary from subjects to subjects from anatomy to biochemistry to physiology pathology clinical medicine family medicine surgery all of those subjects are covered here it also has a free uh, trial for you so that you can get accustomed to it so for watching this complete lectures another variety of lectures which are present at sky.com thank you for watching